Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Rodney coming to you again with more instruction from God's Holy Word and your today's drive-by. Listen, I want to talk to you all today about something that is so important to me and when I look around and even the many people that I've counseled, man, this is such a vital and essential part or component of the church of God that we must follow, that people, listen, we can't get around this. And that is, if you have ought against someone, come to them, come to them. If you believe that something was done against you, go to that person. The scripture says that if you, if your brother has ought against you, if you have ought against your brother, go to your brother first. You know, it says you got to do that even before you go to God. It's, it's important to know that God says when you come to the altar to offer your gift and you at the altar realize, how do you realize? You realize because the scripture says we have one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And we have so many people that believe that you can come to God about someone else when God has already ordained to you in his word to go to that person first. Go to that person first. First, it is important to know that sometimes and oftentimes, many times, many times, the issues that we think are so magnanimous are nothing but anthills. They're, they're, they're small things, misunderstandings. There are uh, misinterpretations. There are uh, so many things that go against the people of God because the scripture even tells us, it says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bonds of peace. It's, it's important to know that we have to endeavor. We have to work hard at keeping us together as people of God. Christ said in John's, John's gospel chapter um, 17, he says, Father, make them one as you and I are one. And, you know, my church, you know, our theme scripture is John chapter 17, verses 21 and 23. And, and it's important to know that, you know, in, in my ministry, my particular ministry, you know, our calling of God is to bring the people together. You know, to cross the lines of division between denominations and to cross the lines of, you know, just this hierarchy that we put where this one can't connect with that one. No, we're one in Christ Jesus. You know, when I was a kid, you know, my former pastor used to say at the cross, it's all level ground. In other words, we're all standing on the same place and there's only one Lord. There's only one Lord. There's only one Lord, and boo-boo is not you. It's, it's God above, our Father, our Heavenly Father. We all serve Him, and there's only one Spirit that flows through all of us. And so, in my natural body, when a particular organ of my body wants to separate itself, if that were possible, if it wanted to separate, us, separate itself from the body, it would therefore die. Just like Christ says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And so Christ and the spirit of Christ flows through every believer. So my friends, I don't know if no one has ever told you this, but I want to share this with you emphatically. You cannot have a relationship with God, a right relationship with God, if you don't have a right relationship with your brother and sister. It's impossible. For the scripture says, how can we say that we love God whom we have not seen and not love our brother who we see every day? So here's the task. Here's the caveat. The caveat is that we spend our time here on this earth to learn to get out of our own way so that we can love one another. To get out of our own way. For the, even the word of God says, it says, by your love for one another shall the world know who you are. And when I look at believers who believe that they're so spiritual, they believe that, and I'm talking about not just members of the church, I'm talking about leaders of the church. I'm talking about people who are in authority. You, you believe that 
you are leading people the correct way, but you are in your secret circles hating on somebody else. You're hating on another ministry. You're hating on another pastor, another bishop. You're, you're talking about them. You're murmuring about them. And I'm here to tell you today, if no one ever told you, and I'm a young man, you know, and, and maybe you might not respect this, but God is going to judge you according to this word because this word is reflective of his word. His word says that you cannot say you love God if you can't love your brother. The scripture says, forgive and it shall be forgiven you. The scripture says, if you being spiritual, see a brethren overtaken in any fault. It says, you that are spiritual, restore him in the spirit of meekness. But no, what we do is ostracize him. We excommunicate those people from our circles because we only want to hang out with people that just like us. And the word of God tells us plainly and correctly. It tells us, it says that if you only do good to those who do good to you, what makes you any different than the scribes and the Pharisees. And then the scripture tells us, unless our religion exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, we cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. So I'm here to tell you, all these attitudes and all these, you got your nose stuck up in a certain way or you running from this church and running from that church and running to this church. Why? Because everybody's always hurting you. Everybody's only hurting you. Boo boo. There's one con. There's one common denominator and that's you. You need to fix you. You got an issue. You got an issue with dealing with your anger and your frustration and your um, your aggravation. And when you're mad, you just want to run and, 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 and blame everybody else for your problem. But God says, no, if you want to grow in the Lord, you got to go back and work that thing out. You got to go back and deal with some of those conversations. Too many marriages are falling apart because husbands and wives can't sit down and talk. Too many relationships in churches with members are falling apart because you can't talk to one another. I'm not just talking about talking about nice things, but I mean talking about differences. Talking about things about you that are different from one another. Well, you know, I don't like this about you. Well, why don't you like this about me? Well, I don't like this about you because the way my mother used to treat me, I don't like that. I remember when I first um, went years ago and I was married years ago. And y'all know, y'all know I'm divorced today. And and my life has, has taken on a huge turn for Christ because of going through divorce and really feeling worse in my, my being, really questioning my, my salvation and questioning my leadership, questioning everything. And, and what happened is that through the midst of that, humbling myself and the Lord bringing me to a heart of full repentance, and then the Lord restoring me and, and building me to the man that he wants me to be. But here's the point I want to share with you. It's important to know that when you come together with one another, you're coming together with one another and you'll find that when, when I was married, when I was married and I would be in the church and I would serve faithful, faithful, faithful. But then when I went through divorce, I was ostracized. And the word of God says, men and women of God, when you see a brother that you believe is overtaken in a fault, you need to restore that person. You need to build that person up. Not build them up in their sin, but really help them to find correction and help them to get back on track with Christ. These are the things that we ought to do, people of God. But in fact, what we spend more time doing, we don't have time for anyone else because inherently we are selfish. Inherently, we are very selfish and we only look out for numero uno. We only look out for the one who matters the most to us, and that is us. But the scripture says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. The scripture says um, that you should do more for somebody else than you do for yourself. Why? Because of the fact it shows a heart of God. And I'm telling you, there's so many of you that you got religion, but you ain't got a relationship. You ain't got a relationship. You don't have a relationship. You have religion. You go to church, yeah, you can dot every I, yeah, you can preach every sermon, yeah, you can testify and you can cry on command. Yeah, you can do all that stuff, but you ain't got a relationship with Christ because there's no way God is going to violate his word for you. And I'm sorry that I'm coming out so harsh, but this thing weighs so heavy on my spirit because so often I find that the biggest issue in the church today is that we won't forgive. So you know what God does? 
God allows for that unforgiveness to come right in our own household. That unforgiveness to disrupt the sanctity of our homes. Why? Because we have defiled his temple. David said, he says, you know what? He says, I don't feel right that I dwell in a house that has paneling and has all the fixtures and God dwells in a tent. So I want to ask you a question. Is your heart big enough that you want more for God and for his people than you want for yourself? Wow. Boom. Bang. I'm here to tell you, you want to get angry at me? Sure. Get angry at me. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it and let's learn to love one another. Let's learn to respect one another. Let's learn to appreciate the gifts that God has given to us for the body of Christ. And not all gifts are niceties. I love you. God bless you. Have a blessed and marvelous day. But listen, forgive somebody today. Forgive. Let it go. Go to them and say, you know what? I'm sorry. Why am I sorry? Sorry because I'm holding on to anger. Sorry because I think I can pray to God and be angry and miserable against you. Not so. Because that's why when you go to the altar and you offer your gifts to the Lord and you say, God, I come before you. Right away, the Holy Spirit said, whoa, stop. You got an attitude with this person. Fix it. And then God expects for you to have a heart of love and to go to that person and say, you know, let's not argue. Let's not fight. We serve this one true living God. And for those of you people out there who are not saved, who don't know about this relationship, don't, don't take this video to think that the, the whole church of God is in disarray. No, there are some of us that believe that God is real and we want to serve him with all of our hearts. You know what? I'm one of them. God bless you. I love you real good. Have a blessed and marvelous day.